Hello everybody, this is Danny Markham with Markham Gardens. Uh, just doing a little project today, thought I'd bring you guys along, maybe show you guys a few things. Um, it is crepe myrtle blooming season here in East Texas, Southeast Texas, and we have got crepe myrtles going nuts everywhere. So um, I decided I was gonna do some starts of crepe myrtle. You guys can see I've already done a few of them here, getting them started in some, um, some rooting plugs. So I just wanted to walk you guys through the process of this. It's really easy. Guys, if you want crepe myrtles or you want to start a crepe myrtle at your house and you don't want to have to buy them or you have a really, really pretty one that your neighbor has or say you just have one on your property and you'd like to have more of them. Um, I just wanted to show you guys a real quick process. Um, the first thing you guys want to do is you want to take a rooting uh, tray and uh, make sure that you've got a, a soil mix that is fairly aerated. Uh, but also has quite a bit of sand in it. Uh, crepe myrtles seem to do really, really well. I've even rooted them in sand. Um, you can even root them, root them in plain perlite if you wanted to, but as long as you keep them moist, they will root. They're really easy to root, guys. Um, but what I've got here is, I don't know if you can see this color. I took a little cutting off of it so you can see the color. This is the Neches. Uh, or Natchez as they call it, the Natchez crepe myrtle. Uh, this is extremely wanted. A lot of people want this one because the the trunks that are on them come off as this uh, exfoliating um, cinnamon bark color and it's beautiful how they they peel and they they uh, obtain different colors on their trunk and they're pretty heavy blooming they've got a really neat growth pattern uh, out of the tops of them anyway I just wanted to show you guys real quick so what I've done is I've taken several cuttings you guys can see they're already starting to wilt. You definitely want to get them before they get fully wilted. Otherwise, they're a little bit harder to root. Uh, but what I'm doing here is I've got, as I said, a whole uh, plug tray and basically a whole bunch of little nubs. Now, I don't want to put a whole bunch of big cuttings in here, so I'm going to turn this into a whole bunch of them. And so what I do is, if you'll look right here, you'll see that we've got one leaf node, we've got two leaf node, three leaf nodes and four leaf nodes. Well, what I'm doing is I'm coming right in here. I don't know if you guys can see. Let me get it from your side. I'll come right in below that next leaf node and I'll go ahead and chop that off, All right? So I'm gonna chop this piece off here. So what I'm gonna end up with is this, it's about a three inch cutting. And so uh, the first two leaves, I'm gonna pop those off. I'm gonna remove those first two leaves. Now you can see here in the camera, that this is, a, is a, a node. So that's a leaf node I pulled it off of. And there's another, whew, it's not one to focus, there it is. And there's another leaf node that I pulled off. This is where the roots are gonna come from, guys. This is what the roots are most likely gonna grow from is out of those leaf nodes. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is I've got two more leaves left on here. I wanna, I wanna leave some leaf, okay? These leaves are the energy for the plant and they are gonna produce some energy uh, for this to create roots. And so, but I, I don't want this whole leaf. Uh, if it's too much leaf, it's having to create too, pull too much energy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off sections I'm just gonna cut off a little section of the leaf. It doesn't need the whole thing. This won't hurt the cutting at all. But that, that leaves me with this little cutting. And this little cutting will root in our plug tray. And uh, the new growth will grow out of these nodes. So this node right here at this crook and this node right here at this crook. And if you guys look, you can see there is like some brown that's coming out of there. Man, my camera is not wanting to focus today. Anyway, there's a little bit of brown that you can see that's coming out of here. There we go. That's coming out of there. That's where that new growth is going to come from. So I'm going to take this cutting now, bottom side down. Make sure you don't put it upside, upside down. And then I am literally just going to shove that in the middle of that soil. I'm going to shove it down in there. And then I'm going to pinch the soil around it. Right? So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to push in around it. That way it creates a little bit of pressure on, on, that, that, uh, on that cutting. And that way I don't have any air gaps or anything in there. And uh, so let me do a couple more of them here. I'll show you guys again. So basically I'm coming in and I'm trimming this off. Taking another cutting. I've got my four leaves there. Uh, now guys, you don't have to leave two leaves at the top. Okay, you can leave one leaf at the top. If you end up with a cutting that has some really weird... 
like leaf structure and some things. Some of the, the uh, varieties have some really weird, weird leaf structure. And if you don't have even leaf structure like this, which the Natchez is known for, um, has, has this really neat leaf structure, um, you can leave one leaf on there, you can leave two leaves, you can even leave three leaves if you wanted to. It's not really going to matter that much. Uh, you just want to make sure that you have at least two nodes below the soil. Those nodes that I was telling you about, that's these guys right here. You see where that brown is coming out of there? Right there, that's what you want underneath the soil. That's what's going to create those roots. And again, we're just going to clip off some of the leaf. We're going to clip off some of that extra leaf so it's not requiring a whole bunch of energy by a plant that doesn't have roots. Um, if there's no roots, it's not pulling up any more energy, guys. It's not pulling up any more nutrients. Um, it will create energy from the leaves because that's what the leaves do. Uh, they create that energy, but uh, we don't want extra leaf. And uh, it re would require too much from the cutting and not give us the best chance of survival. So, guys, I've got a whole bunch of them. I, I'm basically, uh, give me just a second, I'll be right back. I'll show you some of the other colors that I've got. All right, so I have taken a bunch of cuttings. I've put them in an old Folgers can, guys. I like to reuse stuff, so I'm just using an old Folgers can here, but I took some other cuttings here. Uh, this one is a, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but it's a slight kind of a purple variety. Um, I've got to look at the different colors. I believe that this one is called Tuscarora. Um, I'll be doing that one. Uh, I got another set of cuttings here that is, let's see, this one right here, kind of a darker pink to it. Uh, I'll have to look, guys, because there's a whole bunch of varieties that are the dark pink colors, and there's so many of them, I'm going to have to look it up to figure out the, uh, the exact uh, variety of it. And then I've also got another one that I took uh, that is a kind of a light pink, light purple, and a uh, little bit different variety there as well. So I'm going to be doing all four of these varieties. And uh, as I find more, I'll, 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 you know, end up doing those as well. I'm, I'm going to create a whole variety and a whole bunch of different uh, types of crepe myrtle uh, so that Markham Gardens has them on hand. And uh, hopefully at some point when I grow them out a little bit, we'll, we'll start offering those for sale. So, but um, hope that helps you guys. Listen, if you want crepe myrtles, they're super easy, guys. This is not difficult at all. If you don't have a root plug tray, Get you a regular pot, fill it with some well-draining sand, sandy soil, um, go ahead and take your cuttings the same way. Guys, you don't have to cut them uh, really, really tiny. I'm only doing that because I've got this little uh, plug tray. Um, and the dome, as you guys can see, the dome that I've got on here is, I need it to fit over the top, see? So if I made them really, really tall, they would end up not having any room to fit inside of this uh, dome, dome lid. And so, uh, but if, if you guys wanted to, you could actually cut it, you know, you could, you could take cuttings that are this long. Um, you could actually cut it right here where my fingers are. And then go ahead and strip off all of these leaves on this bottom half here and just leave three or four leaves up here at the top of this portion. And you can plant that into a pot and uh, keep that thing moist and it will root guys uh, like i said crepe myrtles are super easy to root they're a lot of fun to mess with just because they are easier they're one of the easier plants if you've got them and you're in the uh you know the the southern uh two-thirds of the u.s you can grow crepe myrtles um i've got friends that live in phoenix arizona uh, where it's 125 degrees in the summertime and they uh, deal with drought as well and crepe myrtles are thriving there as well so um, you can grow these just about anywhere where it doesn't get too cold. I think you're looking at probably uh, 6A is probably the coldest you're going to want to go for growing crepe myrtles. Uh, they definitely don't like the cold too much, and they will die all the way back to the ground if it does get too cold. So uh, anyway, hope that helps you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Just wanted to do a quick video and show you how to root crepe myrtles. Guys, root your own crepe myrtles. Get you some crepe myrtles, grow them. They're really pretty, and they're a lot of fun to grow. So, all right, talk to you guys later. Love you guys. Peace.